Whether you're a magician, juggler, classical violinist, storyteller, or dancer, at some point in your career, you'll have to set up a sound system. Here's a brief overview of how to do it. PAs, or sound systems, are very much like LCD projectors in that they become outdated quickly with newer models that offer better technology. So for our purposes, I'm going to show you an all-in-one system called the Stage Pass by Yamaha and a second system manufactured by two different companies, PV for the mixer and ElectroVoice for the speakers. All PA systems basically have two parts. There's a mixer and there's speakers. And of course the cables go back and forth and the microphones are additional supplements. Now you'll find in the Yamaha Stage Pass that everything is sold together in one package. With the exception of course of cables and microphone. There's a mixer and two speakers. And conveniently, the mixer fits in the back side of the speaker, which makes it much easier to haul. In addition, it comes with carrying cases, like suitcases that you can roll in and out of your performance space. Very convenient, considering it's fairly heavy to move these systems. You want to be aware of the wattage for your PA system. The stage pass comes in a 300 watt and a 500 watt. You'll want the 300 watt if you're going to be doing smaller shows and the 500 watt for large shows such as in gymnasiums. I would suggest using the 500 watt system so you have many different options for performance spaces. So the setup of PA systems are all basically the same and we'll review that process using these two systems which can be applied to any system. The first thing to do when setting up your PA is lay out your power cords And the best extension cords to use are ones with three plug inputs at the end. This saves you the hassle of bringing extra power strips. Next, you want to place the PA mixer in the correct place. This position allows you easy access to your PA system during each one of your performances or workshops so you can adjust volume levels. Now, you want to place your speakers on either side of the hall. You want to place them slightly out in front of the performance space to avoid feedback problems. I like to rotate the speakers in, that is turn them in towards the performance space and use them as monitors so I can hear the computer output for the backup tracks. So during performances you should be able to hear the puppets voices or the music accompanying your voice easily even with a room full of children or in a gym. Okay, the next stage in setting up your PA is connecting the cords, and of course the power cord would be the first thing to do. Plug it securely into the back of your mixer, and take the other end and plug it into your extension cord with the three plug input. You want to make sure that you plug it in very securely so the power doesn't go out in the middle of a performance. Next we'll be plugging in your speakers with some heavy duty speaker cable. It'll have a quarter inch jack and you'll place the jack into the left and right main outs. They're labeled on both the Stage Pass mixer and the XR800. So the right will typically be on the back side to the right, that is for the right speaker. You unwind the cable and stretch it on over to the speaker on stage right. And of course you'll do the same thing for the speaker on the stage left. Next we'll plug in the speakers and some speakers require an adapter like the Electro Voices. You want to keep two of these on hand just in case you should lose one. Uh, doubles for each speaker. And they fit into a slot in the back of the speaker and, and you simply slip it in and rotate and it clicks into place. Locks it. Then it's ready for the quarter inch jack of the other end of the cable to plug in. But for speakers, like in the Stage Pass, you just plug the quarter inch jack directly into the speaker. It's very simple, no adapter necessary. Of course, for this image, just realize the mixer that's usually mounted in the back will be on your table and removed out of the back of the speaker. I'll just find the input there below. 
And of course, you want to plug in the left or stage left speaker exactly the same way. And don't forget to plug in both ends because you'll miss a lot of the stereoscopic sound. Next, we're going to plug in the sound out of your computer or iPod using an RCA cord. There'll be a red and white one that go into the line in. The red one goes in the red plug, and of course the white one in the white plug. And you want both in securely because it's a stereo sound and you want both channels playing. There's an eighth inch pin that goes on the other side, typically called a headphone cable. You see you plug it directly male to female in, and that cable stretches all the way over to the computer behind your screen as dictated by the stage plot. Then you put the other eight inch plug into the sound out of your computer. It varies from computer to computer and you'll see more of that on how to set up the LCD and computer as well. You can also use a quarter inch adapter from the stereo plugs to go into a single line in if you're running short on inputs and uh, can save you space and time if you're getting into a lot of musical instruments etc. So now it's time to set up the microphone, and we'll be using two different types, both of them wireless remotes with headsets, so you'll be able to move freely about. And there's a Sennheiser and an Audio-Technica, but microphones follow the same suit as PAs. They have basic setups that are universal to each model. There are three parts to the wireless microphones we'll be using. There's a transmitter with a body pack, a headset that we wear on our heads, and a receiver that receives a signal from our voices through the microphone. The first thing to do is plug in the receiver's antenna, and they just clip in. You'll see a little slot, and they rotate in and clip in on, on both models and most microphones. That's how they work. Be fairly obvious how to put them in. Then you want to plug in the power Make sure you use the right power adapter. You can blow out your microphone's receiver right away by using the wrong power plug. So make sure the names match the model. Then you plug in each end, one into the receiver and the other into the power cord. Now we'll hook up the microphone cord, and the microphone cord goes into an XLR input, which is one of those three hole plugs and use a heavy-duty microphone cable and the other one plugs into the receiver itself and it goes directly in the back and you'll see it's real obvious which are the XLR inputs. Next we'll hook up the headset and transmitter. And just plug the headset into the transmitter. You can just twist and lock it into place then place the headset on your head. Make sure the clips are over your ears and the microphone part that sits in front of your mouth should be about two inches away and down from your mouth, not directly in front. This will avoid plosures or that popping noise. And you'll notice there's a clip on the back of the transmitter, and that's where you hook it into your costume. You'll want to wrap the wires down through your costume so it's not easily found or seen and so it won't catch on other objects, and then clip that clip into your costume hidden somewhere in the back. Here's a quick note about what to do with storage. I like to carry my microphone around in a camera bag, and you can find them at Walmart or Kmart for fairly cheap, around 20 bucks. But it protects them, and there's lots of little pouches for you to slip in batteries or the headset, etc. And the receiver fits in nicely and is protected as you move about. Now, it's important to check your batteries before each show because if they go out in the middle of the show, it's a pain to change. So you'll find that on the inside of the Sennhauser along with the on button. And you can check how much power is left in your batteries by turning the pack on. You can see the on button inside the Sennhauser. And there's also a handy mute button that you can use to make sure that nobody hears you. And last, you may want to plug in a musical instrument. So you generally use a quarter inch jack and put it in the back of the PA in one of the channels, whichever channel you desire, and take the other end of the cord and plug it into your instrument. In this case, a guitar goes straight into the end of the guitar there at the heel. And you want to make sure that you put your strap on first before you plug in the jack, just so it's in the correct order. And this will be the same for many instruments banjo or keyboard or whatever you're using. So now that we got everything plugged up, it's time to do a sound test. <laughs> 